Hey, my name is Joel. This video is part four in my series on drum sounds, drum physics, why drums sound the way they do. In part one, I talked about the mass of the drum shell and how that affects the drum's performance. In part two, I talked about bearing edges and kind of broke it all down to the basic two approaches to bearing edges and then discussed some of the variables that give us all the various types that we have. Part three, I discussed plastic wrap because for decades and decades, drums have been wrapped in plastic finishes. And what does that do, if anything, to the sound? I discussed that in part three. This is part four, and it's a little different than those three because those three have more to do with how the drum was constructed by the manufacturer. Whereas this is drum heads, and we can change drum heads anytime we want. We're not stuck with whatever drum head came on the drum, whatever they put it on stock at the factory. We can change it to anything that we want. The problem is for some people, many people, young drummers particularly, there's a bajillion different kinds of drum heads out there. And which ones do, do I need? Which ones are good? Which ones aren't? What's gonna fit my playing style? What's gonna give me the sound that I want to have? So what I'm gonna do in this video is basically break down kind of all the features or the characteristics of drum heads and not so much how those are all put together to create all the various millions of types that we have, but really just give you a heads up on what's important and really kind of what each sort of characteristic is going to contribute to the sound so that you can sort of make more informed decisions on what kinds of heads that you want to get in order to produce the sounds that you want to produce. Uh, quick though, a little bit of history. When I was a kid back in the 70s and I was becoming familiar with drums and starting to play drums, there weren't that many types of drum heads out there. Um, uh, the big player obviously was Remo and they had their diplomat and their ambassador and their emperor. Uh, the diplomat is a 7.5 mil head. A mil is a thousandth of an inch. So it's 7.5 thousandths of an inch. They had an ambassador, which was a 10 mil head. Both of those were single ply. And then they had the double ply emperor made with two 7.5 mil films. So a total of 15 mil in total thickness between the two films, plus any air or anything that got stuck in there as well. But basically that was a two ply and then they had the two single plies that were lighter. Then they added the pinstripe also. This is all in the 70s or thereabouts. Um, the pinstripe was similar, as far as I'm aware, to the Emperor, but instead of having two uh, plies that were not bonded together, they actually bonded the two plies together around the edge with the pinstripe so that the two behaved a little differently, it gave a little bit different sound, but still essentially a two-ply head. Uh, and then they had a fiber skin head, which was a single ply head that had a, an odd texture, not your typical texture coating, but an odd um, sort of looked and felt like and behaved with brushes like calf skin. And so that's why they called it fiber skin. It was made, I guess, fiber, fiberglass. I'm not really sure. The original one kind of was fiberglass looking. They had a fiber skin, then they came out with the fiber skin too. I don't know what the dates are on those, but uh, by the time I was aware of them, they were into the fiber skin too. I liked those. Um, the coating kind of came off after a while in little bubbles. It was sort of interesting. But I did like those heads a lot. They sounded really good. And then beyond that, they had the controlled sound head, which was a black dot head, commonly referred to as black dots. And those came out in the late 60s, I believe, or early 70s, about the time that single-headed toms really became the standard or the norm or the preferable, you know, tom of choice in pop music. Because with the lack of the bottom head, they didn't, resonate as much. They didn't have as much sustain or resonance to the tone. They were more focused, more attack oriented. And having that extra dot of mylar in the middle of what is otherwise a single ply medium weight head really gave a lot more focus to the, the stressed the attack. It really stressed the attack and sort of muffled it just enough to make it not have quite as much sustain, which was limited anyway, given that they were used so commonly on single-headed toms. So it really sort of accentuated the thing that at the time people really liked about single-headed toms. And that was pretty much it. The only other thing I was aware of as a kid and I thought was a super groovy idea was this company called Evans made a head that was two plies and it had oil in between them and they called it hydraulic. They still make those heads, by the way. Uh, and I have some and I use them 
occasionally when I want a very, very specific sound. That is a very unique head. Very unique. Are there degrees of uniqueness? Can you be very unique or not very unique? I digress. Anyway, so getting back to drum heads, that was pretty much all that was available when I was a kid. And now you've got all kinds of heads, hundreds of choices, basically, from several different manufacturers. And what I want to do is dumb that down like I did the Bearing Edge video and just really kind of get down to the two main categories of drum head. And they are single ply and double ply. And pretty much everything is going to fit into that category in a very general way. Yes, that's an oversimplification, but not quite as much as one might think. Now, I will also say Aquarian makes a head called a triple thread. It's actually a three ply head. I love Aquarian. I've never used one of those heads. I probably will at some point just to say that I did or just to see what it's like. I can't imagine needing a head with three plies. Certainly not for durability sake because I'm not that heavy a hitter. But anyway, there is a three ply head out there. Barring that one though, pretty much every head that I'm familiar with falls into the single or double ply category. So those are your two big categories. So I'm gonna start describing really kind of what the difference between those um, are in a very general way. So single ply heads compared to double ply heads have a brighter tone, they are more responsive dynamically, they produce more overtones, and they have greater sustain. So that's pretty much the characteristic of single ply heads. Now double ply heads, compared to single ply heads, have a mellower tone. They have greater durability because the impact and the force basically is being spread out between two films and not just one. Fewer overtones and less sustain. So they're mellower, they're darker double ply heads compared to single ply heads. They don't sustain quite as long. One of the reasons, probably the primary reason really that double ply heads don't sustain as long as single ply heads is because when a head is vibrating. The heads are kind of going up and down, right? Well, when you have two plies together going kind of up and down and up and down, that's rubbing. They're rubbing against each other as they flex and they vibrate. And that friction robs the energy. It kind of dampens the head and stops it from sustaining so long. So that's why they produce less sustain. And also because you have two films, you've got more mass, and again, the friction is robbing the energy, so it's muting the overtones and the higher harmonic content of the head. So they're gonna be darker than a single ply head. Let's talk about films because there are different weights of films of Mylar that are used in drum heads. Mylar, by the way, is a brand name for polyester film produced by DuPont. And I don't think every company uses DuPont. Um, I don't really know for sure. So I say Mylar in a generic way, sort of like Frisbee or Kleenex. I just say Mylar, but technically it may not be a DuPont product that every brand is using in their drum heads. But it's a polyester film anyway. So let's talk about film thickness. There are basically three thicknesses that are used in drum heads. Really mostly two, but there is a third one that's kind of made its way onto the scene in recent years. Remo gets the credit for having created the modern plastic head. And the original heads were 7.5 mil film. Again, mil is a thousandth of an inch. So 7.5 thousandths of an inch thick. And those were not terribly durable. They uh, didn't last as long as people wanted them to. Uh, he was also using a three mil film for the snare side, very, very, very thin. So in order to make it more durable, because they did not at the time, I understand, have, this was late 50s, by the way, they did not have access to 10 mil film. So what Remo did was take the seven and a half and the three and put together and wound up with a 10 and a half thickness double ply head, called that the ambassador. A few years later, when 10 mil film was available, they replaced it with 10 mil, and it has been a single ply head, the ambassador, to this day. Although now they do make a vintage ambassador too, which is made like the old two ply original version. So those are two thicknesses of single ply, and then the Emperor is two seven and a half mil plies for a total thickness of 15 mil. And those are your major general um, categories of heads that not only with Remo, but other manufacturers tend to adhere to those. Now, some manufacturers have seven mil instead of 7.5, uh, but still that's the thin, medium, and, and, and heavy 
types of head. Now, there is a single film that is a 14 mil single ply film uh, that some companies use as well. Uh, that is not as common, but it is available. So if you look for it, you can find it. But thinner films compared to thicker films will have a brighter tone. They'll be more responsive, greater sensitivity to soft dynamics. They'll have greater overtones and greater sustain. Thicker films compared to thinner films will have a mellower sound, greater durability, less sensitivity, fewer overtones, and less sustain. Remember, there's more mass there and you're hitting it, you know, all things being equal, the same amount of energy being played into that head. It's not going to resonate as long because there's more mass, so there's, there's less sustain in that. So basically, you've got single ply construction and du dual ply construction, and then you've got three different weights of film. And so with those variables, you can construct a pretty broad range of drum heads. Let's talk about one other thing, coating. Back in the day, drum heads were made of calfskin and they had a texture. And when people played brushes, which was very common, jazz music and, and bebop and things like that, um, you could swish the brush around and the calfskin, the texture of the head made a nice little swishing sound, right? So when you have a plastic head, if it's smooth, well, there's really nothing there to really excite that sound for brushes. So they began coating the heads, spraying on a coating that kind of gave the brushes something to work against. For people who don't use brushes, the coating really has a similar impact, although much less significant as thicker films or double ply heads. You start to see a trend here, mellower sound, greater durability, less sensitivity, fewer overtones, less sustain. That can be said of thicker films, that can be said of double ply heads. Double ply heads a little more dramatic than thicker films and less dramatic even than thicker films would be the coating, depending upon how thick it's applied. But I don't know of anyone who's just layering it on there, you know, any company that's doing that. So a coated head is going to produce a slightly mellower sound, but still very, very bright, lively heads. Without the coating, you generally have clear heads, smooth white heads, and now you've got black heads and you've got colors, all kinds of different colors and all that kind of stuff. But those have no coating on them. So we've mentioned single ply and double ply, which are the main categories of heads. With that, you've got different thicknesses of film being used for those. And to muddy the waters a little further, there are a few little accoutrements, little things that have been added to the heads over the years to give them a unique, uh, more specific functionality and characteristic. Uh, most common and for the longest length of time is the dot. Remo introduced a controlled sound head. That is just a single ply medium weight head with an extra layer of mylar in the middle, which that added mass lowers the resonance, adds a little bit more focus to the sound, not quite so much overtone, a little bit more of a pure attack. And let me just take a second to talk about the attack characteristic of a drum head. I read often that thinner heads or single ply heads compared to double ply have more attack. That is not really, in my experience, true. And what I mean by that is I'll make a comparison to the first video in this series. When I talked about mass and a drum that has greater mass in the shell will have a stronger fundamental tone, that doesn't change the content of the overtones. The overtones are the same between a thin shell and, and, and a thicker, heavier shell, but the heavier shell produces a stronger fundamental. So the overtones are a smaller percentage of the sound, but that's because there's more fundamental in that sound compared to the thinner drum shell. But they both really have the same amount of overtones. The same is pretty much true for uh, thin drum heads or single ply drum heads and double ply drum heads. When you hit the drum, those attack frequencies in the mid range are pretty much about the same between both types of heads. But in the thin or single ply head, there's more overtone and there's more harmonic content and there's more sustain and so the attack isn't quite as pronounced as it is on a thicker or double ply head where you have the attack, but the construction of the head and the material it's made from reduces the sustain and the harmonic content. So you get a strong attack with a lot of definition comparatively in a heavier double ply head compared to a single ply head. Even though the attack is about the same, the lack of additional harmonic content and sustain in the thicker or double ply head is going to increase the percentage of sound made up by the attack. And as a result, you'll find that double ply heads 
feel like they have more attack than a single ply head, even though it could be argued that because of the brighter harmonic content, there'd be a stronger attack in the single ply head. For this reason, I just wanted to, to clarify that because for this reason, if you look at drummers who uh, you know play in, in metal bands or they're just like speed players that need a lot of definition for the fills that they're doing and stuff like that, you will see almost exclusively they're using double ply heads, sometimes very thick double ply heads because you get a strong attack and then the drum sort of goes away. There's not a lot of sustain, there's not a lot of overtone or anything in that frequency range of the attack to compete with it. So you get a lot of articulation. If that's the kind of music you like, you probably need to be looking for a double ply head. So just wanted to point that out about the attack. So I mentioned dots, kind of what they do. Another thing that's very common is now a, um, an inlay ring that's actually a ply of mylar usually a thinner ply positioned underneath the main film. It's part, it's in the collar and it's part of the drum head. It's sort of like adding a separate ply, but it's only around the perimeter of the drum underneath instead of all the way across the thing. So you have a single ply head with this ring underneath of additional mylar. And what that serves to do is create less sustain, a mellower tone and fewer overtones. All of these treatments in some way are going to decrease the sustain. They're going to make the tone mellower because they have fewer overtones. It's all to varying degrees. Some of these treatments are dramatic. Some are much more subtle. Um, I find that the inlay underneath to be pretty dramatic, uh, but I also find that it's useful in a lot of types of music. I'm a person who likes a lot of rings, so I typically like to stick with a single ply head. Uh, on the snare drum, and I don't use a whole lot of muffling normally. That's me, really has nothing to do with the discussion of drum heads, so let's get back to this. Another thing that you'll commonly see on heads are the addition of rings of some kind, like fairly stout rings, either made of felt or made of foam and held in place by like a plastic uh, tray that's kind of glued to the head, like the Evans EMAD, the batter side. And, and these are usually things that you'll find on the batter side of a bass drum. Uh, you know, some companies, I think Aquarian and Remo both, will take a felt strip that's literally glued to the, to the batter head. Those are made typically for the batter and sometimes the resonant side of bass drums. Again, it's reducing overtones, it's, it's reducing sustain, it's providing an overall darker and mellower tone. It's just a bit more dramatic than some of the more subtle approaches. The only other real thing that I can think of that's part of drum head construction and not external muffling, which is a whole book unto itself. And I don't know if I'll ever do a video on that. That's gonna be substantial if I do. But as far as the actual construction of the drum head itself, the only other thing that I'm aware of that really has an effect on this is Evan's approach with their dry series heads where they actually perforate the head around the perimeter. There's little holes around the edge of the drum head. And that doesn't add mass. It doesn't really decrease significantly the high frequency response of the head, so I like the approach. It definitely reduces the sustain, gives it a much more articulate, crisp, drier characteristic, which is why they call it dry. So that's another approach, and certainly worth trying those out if you want a more articulate sound and you don't really want to muffle your drum. You want to kind of maintain a little bit more of of the higher harmonics, although again, the sustain is not quite as long. So what does all of this mean for you? You want to find the drum head that creates for you the sound and the drumming experience that you want. The way to sort through all of the variables and all the models that are available because of all of the variables and the different sort of combinations of them, Really, you need to ask yourself two questions. First and foremost, what kind of sound do you want, right? So ask yourself, what kind of sound do I want? There are three components to drum sound, basically. You have the attack component, you have the tone component, and you have the sustain component. Interestingly, a little aside, the thing that made the Simmons SDS-5 the very first sort of usable, fully electronic drum kit of back in the early 80s, the thing that kind of made it work compared to all of the things that had gone before was the fact that uh, Simmons, what is his name? Phil Simmons or, I'm sorry, don't remember off the top of my head his first name. But he identified that you have to have an attack and you have a tone and you've got decay or sustain. And so he made sure to provide for all three of those characteristics 
and that's what made those drums work compared to everything before, which was more like a pure tone or just a noise oscillator or whatever. So you didn't really have control over those elements. So he gave you control over those things, still in a completely analog way, nothing particularly groundbreaking about the circuits themselves, just that he put all those and packaged them together in one device that would allow you to have that control. So those are the characteristics of drum sound. You have an attack characteristic, you have a tone, which includes the pitch and the overall character of the sound, the timbre, if you will, and then sustain, which could be long or very, very short, whatever, but there's some sustain characteristic. So what sounds do you want? And I would say also that there are some limitations in the physical world. You can't just sort of have as much of all three as you want. If you notice, all of the characteristics of things that darken the tone um, tend to also reduce the harmonic and they tend to also reduce sustain. So for that reason, if you want a nice dark mellow tone from your drum head, you're probably not gonna get a lot of sustain, certainly not as much as you would with a drum that would provide a brighter tone and along with that has longer sustain. So anytime that you're adding mass or friction to a drum head, you're gonna be reducing the sustain along with the higher harmonics. So if you want a darker tone, you can't get as much sustain as you could with a head that has inherently brighter tone. Those just sort of go together. Nevertheless, it's still worth asking that question because also when you're recording or playing live through a sound system, you have some processing control as well. So you might want the sustain, so you choose a thinner head that's gonna sustain a little bit more and use a little bit darker processing to get that darker tone. But just be aware you can only do so much with the drum head itself. But again, you wanna figure out what kind of sound that you want and then go toward the designs that will give you that. And I would say start with some basics and I'll come back in just a second, tell you kind of what the basics are for each of the two more or less types. Uh, and then the second question that you would ask is how durable do I need it to be? Are you a heavy hitter? Do you tend to you know, turn your drum heads into English muffins? If so, you probably want a head that's got more durability, something that can handle that, that you're not gonna be knocking it out of tune and or just destroying it and replacing it a lot. That can get really expensive really quickly. So what do you want it to sound like? And again, what kind of durability? And again, it's kind of a trade-off. If you need something super durable, that kind of limits your options in terms of finding something that's clear, bright, and lots of sustain and all of that. Answer those questions, but I will give you a starting point both for single ply and for double ply and my reasoning behind it. If durability is not a factor, meaning you don't really play hard, you're not typically denting or breaking drum heads and breaking cymbals and sticks and all that kind of stuff, then I would definitely recommend that the ideal starting point for the greatest, broadest versatility would be to start with a batter head that is a single ply, 10 mil head, texture coated. Single ply 10 mil will give you the brightness and the sustain and everything that you would want, could want out of a drum head. The coating mellows it just a touch in a way that I find particularly nice. If you don't ever have a need for brushes or anything where the coating is really useful in that respect, you could certainly go for a smooth head, a smooth white or clear head. But I find those to be a little bit brighter still and I do like the little bit of mellow that happens with the coating and it's never too dark. Uh, and arguably it might add a little more durability. I'm not so sure about that, honestly. But that's a great place to start because if you need more attack and shorter sustain and a darker sound and all that, you can always muffle. You can put rings, you can put tape, you can put gel, you can put a wallet, you know, tape a wallet to your snare drum or whatever. You can do lots of things to change the character of the drum sound to mimic the sound that you would get with different types of heads that are more specialized in their design, while still having the ability to take all that off and have a nice bright drum sound. So it's a very, very versatile head. And again, if you're not clubbing away and destroying you know, heads, then that's what I would recommend. If you are a little bit heavier hitter, you might still be interested in something that has a 14 mil thickness, still single ply because uh, it will give you greater versatility, but greater durability as well. If you are pretty certain that you like a slightly mellower tone and you really want to emphasize the attack, like I say, that uh, double ply heads can do, and so you, you know that you're playing rock and you know that the attack is really important, you can just start with a double ply head. I would say start with your basic double ply head made from two thin films. And it could be coated, 
Honestly, if you don't need the brush work, if you're not going to do brushes or things like that, I would use, you know, clear or, or smooth white. But I would just go smooth with that because that lack of coating will give you the ability to make it as bright as you could want it to be. And you can always darken it up, like I say, and you've got the durability and you naturally have more attack compared to the harmonic because of all that being reduced. For the bottoms of heads, I would recommend clear or smooth white, single ply, medium weight, 10 mil heads. That is, again, the, the broadest useful head. If you want a little bit greater resonance and really um, emphasize the sustain of the drum, you could go with a thin film on the bottom. Again, I would recommend clear or smooth to start with, uncoated. Uh, some people do like coating, but I would start with the smooth because that's going to be, again, your broadest. You can always put a piece of tape. You can always do something to make it a little mellower if you, if you find that that head needs to be mellower. I've never really found that resonant heads need to be particularly mellow sounding. Most of that comes from the top head choice that I have. But again, a lot of things that you can do with those drums. So what kinds of heads am I talking about? Well, for a single ply coated batter head, uh, for Aquarian, you would be talking a texture coated single ply. For Remo, you'd be talking a coated Ambassador. And for Evans, it'd be a coated G1. For the double ply heads, for Aquarian, that would be a Response 2. For Remo, that would be Emperor. And for Evans, that would be G2. And for Resonant heads, if it's Aquarian, it would just be the classic clear, 10 mil, medium weight. Remo would be a clear Ambassador. And for Evans, it'd be a clear G1. And that's a great starting point. Then as you realize how you're tuning and muffling and treating the drums to kind of get closer to the sound that you're hearing in your head, you can start to explore drum heads that have sort of special characteristics that sort of lend themselves to that type of tonality. And just learn as you go. But this is kind of a good general approach, I believe, to learning about drum heads and selecting drum heads and, and really, again, Single ply, double ply, those are the big things. And then you got sort of your, your dots and your rings and your additional muffling strips that are glued on and things like that. But generally single ply and double ply, that's really all it kind of comes down to. And out of those variations, you do literally have hundreds of heads to choose from. So lots of fun. I hope this is useful to you. If you like this kind of content, you dig drums and you dig learning about how to make them sound certain ways and why they sound like they do, the history of drums, um, I do have a review coming up of a snare drum that I'm real excited to share with y'all. Uh, I haven't finished putting that together yet, but I'm close. Uh, but if you like drum content of any kind, really, this is, I think, a channel that you would really enjoy. Uh, I sure would appreciate you subscribing, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.